Thank you for staying in uh, this uh, late hour of the day. I'm really pleased to present New Evolution to you uh, today. Uh, before uh, going ahead with that, I would just like to say that I have a few um, goals at the end of my presentation and during the slides. And of course, such goals are always associated with risk and uncertainty. Let's dive into uh, New Evolution. So New Evolution was uh, founded in 2001. I'm a chemist by training. I'm one of the uh, co-founders of, uh, of the company. Uh, we are based in Copenhagen, uh, but we've actually had Swedish owners since 2004. So I consider New Evolution being a Scandinavian company today. We're 48 employees, 10 nationalities, uh, working in our research facilities in uh, Copenhagen. In June, uh, we moved from the first North Premier uh, to the main market in Stockholm. And what I'll be talking about uh, to you today is our platform. We have a very unique small molecule uh, drug discovery platform. And our vision is to use this platform to provide new medicines for treatment of severe inflammatory diseases like autoimmune diseases, as well as in the field of cancer. And in this process, we will be building, and we are in a, in a good process of actually realizing that, a pipeline of both preclinical and clinical uh, programs. Now, our platform is so powerful that it gives us much more than we can chew on ourselves. So a significant part of our strategy is actually to execute a number of partnerships. And we've been doing that consistently over the years. But let me just show you in, very, in a very schematic uh, fashion how drug discovery uh, is actually performed because then you will maybe be better at appreciating what it is that we can do at uh, New Evolution. So here you see a, in a very schematic manner at the very right you can see that you have an approved drug and then you have certain phases. You have a clinical uh, development phase where you test in humans and you have a preclinical safety phase and then you have a long research phase. Now, to get to the final approved drug, you have one molecule in that uh, as an active substance in that uh, pill or injectable or whatever it is. And that one molecule is earlier in the process called a candidate, a candidate compound. How do we arrive at these candidate compounds that we dare to put into testing in humans and then later on put into glasses of pills and use on a daily basis? How do we arrive at these? Well, we need to go through a research process. And the research process uses the testing of a large pool of molecules, test molecules that have to go through various stages. Initially, we call them hits, optimized hits, leads, and later on optimized leads. And one day, maybe we have a candidate compound. What's all this testing about? Well, we need to test on the target. Are our, our compounds, are they active? We need to test in cells. We need to test in rodents. We need to test in higher animals. And if you put it very simplistically, what we really need to achieve is to show three things. We need to show activity. We actually have the activity we're looking for. We need to show stability. So we have a duration of action that is long enough at the site where we need our compound to work. And then we need to show safety. But we need to show it both at the target level, at the cellular level, at the level of the rodents, and also in the higher animals. But what we are faced with then is a number of traffic lights. And we, in each of these, we need to pass, and we can only get to the candidate nomination if all these traffic lights, they go green. So this, of course, uh, means that uh, it's a very complicated process with a lot of efforts that needs to go into the process of identifying these candidate compounds. Now, if you are a big pharma company, what you would do is you would start with, sorry, you would start with screening. So up here we have the target. You would start with the first question is, do I have any compounds that can actually do some of what I'm looking for, can bind to a certain disease target? And they do their screening uh, in a robotic format. And here I have a stack of so-called microtiter plates. <coughs> a stack like this is about uh, 35, 40 uh, centimeters. Uh, 10,000 compounds can fit into a rack like this. If you're a big pharma company, you'll be screening about 1 million test substances initially. So that's a pile of these of about 35 to 40 meters. It takes them two weeks to do this in a robotic setup. And sometimes they find something, other times they do not find anything, and then the project just stops. Also, to go through all these traffic lights, what you really want is to have as many molecules as possible, because then 
at the end you would be guided first of all through the process and you will have a higher chance of actually achieving the candidate nomination. So what do we do at New Evolution? Well, instead of screening one million, we screen many more molecules. We are not in the millions, we are not in the hundreds of millions, we are not even in the billions. No, we are in the trillions of molecules, so we are in a number of molecules that is so massively much larger than what you can do with conventional techniques. So that's what we do. We screen a large number of molecules early on to see if we can find active substances, and then this, these active substances will guide us through the process, leading us to the candidate nomination in a much more efficient way of doing this. So here you have a sort of a, you could say in a pictorial way, a summary of what happens in big pharma, huge robotic setups, a lot of chemists that are in, involved in the process. At New Evolution, actually, now this picture on the right shows that you need to be two persons to screen uh, trillions of molecules. No, you can actually do it just one person. And it's a very efficient way of doing it. You see it here. What we are able to do is actually to work with mixtures of compounds. So we can have all of our molecules in one test tube and then we can fish out the active substances in a screening technique where we take a droplet from our, our libraries, add it to the disease target of interest, a few molecules bind to the target, we can wash all the ones that are not active, we can wash those away, and then we can isolate those that are actually active and then we get to the deconvolution, which is a sequencing of DNA because each of our test substances are labeled with a piece of DNA and the DNA functions as a barcode. So just as you have the sodas over there, you go to a barcode reader, the barcode reader will tell you this is water, water with bubbles, this is Ramlöser, and this is the price. In our case, we take the DNA sequences, we read the DNA sequences, and our computers will tell us what are the active substances. So this is the technique. And we have a lot of molecules in many libraries, and it's about doing screening. We screen every year more than 10 targets, more than 10 disease targets uh, that are carefully selected, such that we are actually addressing very important diseases. And our focus of interest is the inflammatory space, so autoimmune diseases as well as cancer. On this one slide, cancer is just one, uh, one uh, picture up here, but of course cancer is, there are numerous different types of cancers, but a number of different diseases are selected by us. Here is what we want to treat. We select the targets that are relevant, we screen the targets, and then we have this very efficient way of doing the optimization towards the candidate compounds compounds that are then ready to move into clinical studies. Now this is much more than we can do ourselves of course and that's why the partnering is so important and we are entering into a number of partnerships. Uh, some years ago we announced a very large uh, collaboration with Almiral and one with Angin that I will be speaking a little bit uh, more about. So having this powerful platform applying it against a wide range of different disease targets in the inflammatory space and in cancer, we are dependent on partnerships. And New Evolution has spent a lot of years on establishing a strong network in the pharma industry. They are very aware, well aware of who is New Evolution and what is it New Evolution does. So over the years, we have generated 17 deals, uh, equaling more than 500 million Swedish kroner in non-diluted financing through our partnerships. And our goal for 2018 is that we would like to uh, close a further deal. This can be an out-licensing of one of our programs, it could be an R&D collaboration, or it could be some kind of platform collaboration. And we are in discussions for various types of partnerships uh, right now. Clearly, this is a forward-looking statement. So, looking at the pipeline, um, as I mentioned, we have a vision of finding treatment for inflammatory diseases and cancer, building a broad pipeline of projects. And as you will see in a minute, we have a number of uh, very advanced preclinical programs already, and we are getting closer to the clinical studies. One of the most uh, uh, mature programs that we have are in the space of inflammatory diseases. If you look at this uh, green cell you have here, this is an immune system cell. It's a T helper cell. It's a very specific type of T helper cell. TH17 cells, they are called. They release a substance called IL-17. 
IL-17 is a key driver behind the number of autoimmune diseases, and you see some of them at the bottom of the slide here, psoriasis, ankylosing spondylitis, rheumatoid arthritis, and also it's been demonstrated that in IBD and multiple sclerosis, the IL-17 is also relevant. So for the clinical studies and the uh, treatment today, IL-17 is already a proven target. We have antibodies today. These are injectable. They are extremely expensive. If you have psoriasis and you are so lucky that you get an antibody treatment, it will cost you about 12,000 Swedish kroner or the authorities 12,000 Swedish kroner per month to treat psoriasis. This is a chronic disease, so this is a lifetime uh, uh, treatment. So very expensive. It's an injectable, and on top of that, it compromises your immune system because the antibodies suppresses your immune system for typically uh, 30 days after each injection. So what we would like to achieve here is to come with small molecules that can achieve the same. So small molecules that can block these Th17 cells. And we have two approaches to do that. We have something called ROR, gamma T inhibitors. They block these Th17 cells from forming and they also block the active ones. And then recently in August we announced that we also have direct small molecule inhibitors for the IL-17. So having the same mechanism of action as the antibodies that are available, we have a small molecule that can potentially be used as either a cream topical or as a tablet-based solution. So partnerships is key for us. Here is one of our partners. This is in the psoriasis uh, space. Who is Almiral? Well, Almiral is a big player. It's a mid-sized pharma company. They are top three in Europe in terms of dermatology, top six in the US. They are loca located in Spain. They are present in over 17 countries. They are a strong player for us. They help us to move our program forward towards uh, um, the uh, market. You can see the deal terms on the right-hand side. We received 110 million Swedish kroner at signing, and we have a significant potential milestone package in front of us. Now, here you see the full uh, pipeline as we uh, have right now, and as you can see, it's a number of different programs. They are all within autoimmune diseases, inflammation, and cancer, with a few programs also in the immuno-oncology space. And partnering, as I mentioned, is really important to us. We already have identified Almiral as one of our partners. And we have a very large research collaboration with Amgen. This is in the space of cancer. So who is Amgen? Well, Amgen is a uh, top seven U.S. company uh, in, uh, in the U.S. pharma company. They are top 12 in the world. They have a significant interest in cancer, treatment of cancer and neuroscience, and they have entered into a large alliance with us where we have multiple programs that we are working on. New Evolution will take some of the early risk in the programs, and then once we are successful, we have Amgen opting into the programs, and if they do so, then they take over all costs and we still keep the rights to the programs, and then later on they can license it. And you can see the financial terms here. We can get up to more than uh, 90 million Swedish kroner in licensing per program. Amgen has already opted into the first program, and we have a significant milestone package. So with all those words about partnerships, New Evolution is really dependent on partners. We have more in our pipeline that we can push ourselves, and that's why we promote our programs for partnering. Having an outlook, uh, this is what we have achieved uh, in summary since the IPO in, uh, on the 1st North in 2015. We uh, raised 250 million Swedish kroner to push our pipeline towards clinic and also to establish the first set of, uh, of partnerships around our programs. We gave the guidance that within uh, 18 months we would like to, uh, to sign two deals. That led to the Amgen collaboration after 10 months, and it led to the Almiral collaboration after 12 months. We moved to the main market in uh, June this year, and in summer a Amgen opted into the first of the research programs. And of course we are hoping to see them opt in and taking over all costs for additional programs. Here's our uh, prospects for the near-term future. Um, in terms of our corporate uh, goals, uh, we moved to the main market uh, before end of, uh, of June, uh, just as we had guided. Uh, we expanded the shareholder base. We raised capital in May to further uh, progress our pipeline. And we expect to announce, hopefully, 
uh, to have our programs, uh, clinical development ready during 2019. The raw program and the bed program has such potential, and we intend to move our IL-17 program, the internal uh, small molecule uh, program, forward towards uh, candidate selection. And then, of course, partnership-wise, we expect to, um, to have more news to report from our collaboration with Almiral. We expect to report further news from the Amgen collaboration. And then we have announced guidance that we expect to do a mo a one more deal uh, before end of 2018. If you want to learn more about New Evolution, please visit our website, newevolution.com. Uh, there you will find a lot of our, our uh, financial reports, which contains a lot of, uh, of uh, stuff, not just the financial numbers, but also description of the science, annual reports, video reports, you have paid for analysis also available on the website. And then some kind people have actually established a uh, follower uh, group on Facebook, New Evolution Action Group, uh, Daniel uh, Melgren and Magnus Lindström. They are administrators of this group, and if you apply for membership, then you can chat with the other followers of uh, New Evolution. And with those words, thank you for your attention and over to the Q&A. <clears throat> thank you very much, Alex. Uh, my God, with so many trillions of molecules, where do I start? Um, uh, the IL-70A blocker, uh, you have potential in their revolution, potential then in number of inflammatory diseases and uh, uh, both as topical and tablet treatment. Uh, do you foresee the topical cream and the tablet and to, to be developed for the same indication or will you go in different directions? I mean, the, the topical solution will be of most interest for psoriasis, mm. whereas the systemic treatment, the tablet-based mm. solution can be used for psoriasis if you have moderate to severe psoriasis, hopefully. Uh, as well as some of the other indications that I mentioned on, on, on the slide. Mm. Uh, the nice thing with the topical is that if you have a milder to moderate uh, psoriasis, maybe you don't want to compromise your immune system and suppress it, uh, then it's nicer to have a local treatment. And that's why we believe that the topical solution is really attractive. And the mechanism of action ex is exactly the one that has been proven by the antibodies already. Mm. And... Uh, uh... <laughs> How long would you idea? I mean, your your, your business model obviously ba is based on partnerships, partnering. Uh, how long would you ideally like to develop this program before you find a strategic partner? Well, there's no clear answer to that question. Mm. Um, I think the, the the best answer is actually that it's a balancing act. Mm. Um, if you take the raw program that we our license to Almiral, mm. uh, we had a number of offers for the program before we actually decided that Almiral is the right partner for us. They are a key player in the derm space. Mm. Uh, they are offering us actually the best terms in 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 the raw space that has been seen in terms of deals. Then it's hard to argue why do you want to keep the program. Uh, I would say the same for, for the IL-17. I mean, it really depends on what kind of term sheets uh, that you are offered as we move forward. We just mm -hmm. started promoting the program. It's only uh, uh, two months ago that we actually disclosed the, the nature of, of the program. Mm. And uh, you obviously accomplished a lot since your IPO and uh, um, partnerships with Amgen, Almiral. Um, that's um, quite huge for, for most companies. Um, Entering the main markets, a logical step then. Uh, what are your reflections on how the list change will change uh, the, the benefit, how, how it will benefit New Evolution going forward? Well, I, I think I'll start by saying that the first North marketplace, the premier marketplace, was really important for us. With the support that we got from the shareholders, they really allowed us to push our pipeline forward. Without that, we wouldn't have had the company we have today. Mm. So that was key. And it was a good platform for actually, you could say, training the team to be a public company. And uh, when we came to June, we felt ready that uh, we, we can now uplist the company and, and, and be a main market uh, player. Uh, of course, we are still small cap uh, with ambitions to, to move uh, higher up in the ranks. Mm -hmm. um, what does it do? Well, it gives us uh, potentially easier access to institutions and international investors. That's mm -hmm. very important for, for everyone that uh, wants to develop uh, drugs, of course. Mm -hmm. And it helps also on the daily turnover in, 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 in the stock. And, and that's key. And that we have already seen a doubling on, on the average turnover in the stock. So that's very important, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, with so many uh, assets, potential assets, how do you how do you narrow your scope to not lose focus? 
So the, the, the key focus is actually the inflammatory space and, the, and cancer. Mm. And immune oncology is sort of overlapping between the, the two spaces. So we are learning a lot from one space that we also use in the other uh, space. Mm. We team up with uh, key advisors when we select the disease target, such that we actually select the, the right ones. We discuss with our board, of course. Uh, we have quarterly reviews. We uh, move out and promote our programs early on to hear what, what's the interest in the in the pharma industry do they actually like what we also like so it's it's a process where you can say you mature the program from very early on for the business uh, development uh, side of things but then again it's it's not necessarily such that we need to partner each and every program it's just very nice to have a platform that can generate so many programs that you can actually generate revenues that you, you can reinvest and in that uh, way actually build a very uh, broad portfolio of, of assets so i think that's unique yeah, uh, we're running out of time, but uh, speaking of the uh, partnership and goals, you have a goal uh, for 2018 to to announce one more partnership, mm -hmm. correct? Uh, year is coming to an end. The year is coming to an end? Yeah, Yes. that's not a problem. Uh, it's always a problem. <laughs> I mean, anyone in the room will, will, will know that uh, not just us, all the biotech companies you have seen today, we all work hard, we spend a lot of hours, we do it because we love what we do, we believe in what we do, um, and we work hard to, to strive and uh, realize the goals we have. And if we didn't believe in the goals, we would change our guidance for, for sure, and we haven't done that, so we believe in it. Confidence, that's good. Uh, on that note, I thank you very much, Alex, for thank coming you. today. Thank you. Give him a warm hand.